Everything about an African blacksmith's workshop is set up for efficiency. The shape of the tools are merely an extension of the blacksmith's hand. The fire being in close proximity to where the smith is sitting allows the heat to be easily accessible. Having it surrounded by earth also tends to direct the charcoal's heat toward the center of the fire. It acts as an insulator, so it keeps the fire burning very, very hot, uses less fuel, and is able to get the iron up to proper temperatures much quicker. It is likely that these kinds of preheating forced air bellows allowed high heat smelting processes to develop in Africa long before European and American equivalents were invented that eventually ushered in the Industrial Revolution of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Many of the blacksmiths in Africa are also using stone tools along with the iron tools. This basalt hammer is used with two hands and it has a very sophisticated form on the, the working end of it. It's been polished in two different directions so that the material can be moved very quickly as forging is taking place. Another beauty of using stone tools, both in an anvil and in a hammer form, is that it doesn't rob the heat from heated iron. The iron is able to stay hot longer. Steel tools, they tend to take heat, suck heat from the material. The different forms of the iron hammers are also quite unique, and each cultural group that I've encountered has very specific forms to their tools. This hammer, for instance, is to be used with two hands. Uh, it's really a sledgehammer, in essence, but when driven into the ground up to the shoulder, it also operates as an anvil, so it's really a dual-purpose uh, tool that acts as both hammer and anvil.